Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mariano Spivak. I'm a postdoctoral researcher and research uh, programmer at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Uh, as part of the team that develops two softwares, one that I'm going to talk today, BMD, Visual Molecular Dynamics, for visualization. We also have in our research cen uh, center uh, another software that does the physics engine for molecular dynamics called NAMD. So some of the things that I'm going to talk today are quite linked because the two softwares are intertwined since the beginning. This is a research center uh, uh, supported by uh, NIH for uh, over 25 years. So let me tell you about uh, BMD. So BMD, as I said, is uh, quite an established uh, program in the biophysics community. You may have used it uh, also if you work in material science or um, some sort of chemistry simulations, quantum chemistry. I myself, I was a user of the software back when I did my PhD in computer, computational chemistry. I was doing simulations like very small number of atoms and I was visualizing the results using uh, BMD. Even though the main purpose of the software was originally to, uh, uh, to do molecular dynamic simulations, visualization and analysis, but it, it grows. It has grown uh, to also cover uh, cell scale simulations. This is an example of, um, of a visualization of uh, cell scale modeling. Uh, also, as I said, quantum chemistry simulations. And also, it reads uh, experimental data like uh, uh, structure data, like X ray crystallography, uh, cry cry electron microscopy, some uh, tomograms, and uh, uh, and MR data as well. So the idea of the software is that it helps the user not only visualizing uh, structural data and anal analyzing the results, but also preparing uh, and setting up simulations as well. So it's kind of like an all around. And it combines, as this Im image shows, combines the structural information with all the results from your simulation. Okay, So you can go back and forth. And one of the main purpose of BMD is also helping in the modeling, uh, molecular modeling of the, because you have sometimes uh, a structural data from, from experiment that is missing pieces or is inc incomplete in some sense, and you want to simulate that system, you need to come up with some tools to, to kind of like finalize your, your structure, okay? So uh, there are uh, extensive number of tutorials in our website. This is our website. Uh, Maybe uh, today in the afternoon, a hands-on session, you can, if you're interested, you can go over. Otherwise, you're welcome to, uh, to browse this uh, website. There are uh, all-purpose general tutorials, and there are quite advanced tutorials for both, as I said, the both so softwares, the visualization software, BMD, and the uh, molecular dynamics engine, NAMD, okay? Uh, Okay, so what is the goal of this software is basically to help and complement, complement the experimental uh, studies and what we, what we coined the term is the computer microscope, computational microscope, okay? So we get this uh, structural data from experiment uh, and then we can uh, visualize it with the uh, structural and, and, and time uh, frame that can permit you to get much more details from the, from the much more details in science compared to just experimental uh, resources alone. So you can get, for example, information about the, uh, the movement of these, uh, of these uh, molecules that could be related to the function, and uh, that's from getting information from the simulation. So that's the, that's the main idea of the software. Um, and as I said uh, earlier, BMD is a complete package for, for this type of uh, domain. Uh, so you can prepare your simulation, uh, getting the, 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 the structural information from the experiment. You can uh, do modeling. You can, do, uh, you can set up your, your scripts, your, uh, your input files for your, for your engine. And then you can come back and do the analysis. And, um, and one of the main uh, features, which is similar to what uh, Joe and uh, Silvio uh, talked earlier, is that this is uh, 
this software is, uh, has extended uh, by scripting languages like TCL, TK, and Python, so you can do all your um, pipeline, all your workflow, uh, once you do it in interactively in the, in the graphical user interface, and then you can script uh, all your analysis and run them in batch mode. And not only that, but also this scripting layer allows the users to create uh, extensions or plugins on top of the software that uh, help, for example, you can customize and do a specific analysis that you want to do and make it more easily to, to distribute to other users in the community. Uh, so one of the examples that of these plugins is, uh, is called QuickMD. QuickMD is kind of like a simulation wizard. Uh, for those of you that are interested in, in, in starting your, your journey in molecular dynamics, uh, I would strongly recommend to try this because it will guide you on all the steps. I, I, this is a workflow of, of a typical uh, molecular dynamics simulation. All these steps, this software guides you through them. So, and one of the nicest things about this particular plugin is that uh, not only it gives you all the, uh, all the steps, but also it records everything that you've done uh, for uh, reproducibility. So next time you want to, or even if you're preparing your paper and you want to know what, what did I do, what, what were the steps that I took, everything is recorded. So you can go back and see, or you can do the same process with a different system, for example, okay? Uh, this is one of the examples. This is a, a non-extensive list of all the plugins in BMD uh, that have been developed over the years. And the nice thing about this is that those highlighted in green are plugins that were developed by uh, external users, basically users from the community, not, not uh, on the lab, on, on our lab. And uh, you, can, I mean, you can tell by some of the numbers, uh, the, the, sorry, the names of the plugins, most of them are uh, for analysis. So basically, people have their own custom analysis, and they repeated it uh, several times. So you thought, okay, I, maybe I can uh, produce some graphical user interface along with these analysis scripts to distribute this analysis uh, in the community. So these are only uh, those that are accompanied by a graphical user interface. There are also uh, several plugins that have been developed over the years to do I.O. for different file formats. Uh, those are called Morphal plugins. And those are, everything is open source. So if you're interested in taking some, some uh, uh, source code that reads, I don't know, some sort of file that you're interested in your, in your, in, in your own software, you can take those and use them as long as you uh, um, use the correct uh, license. So what are the concepts of uh, BMD, uh, the visualization concepts? Is the idea is similar to what uh, Joe uh, told us about. Uh, in BMD, each scene is composed by uh, different graphical representations, okay? These graphical rep representations have different coloring methods, drawing styles, and um, materials, and you can, one of the most important things about these graphical representations is the selection language that is embedded in BMD. So basically you can, uh, once you have your structural information, you can select different parts of your, your structure to highlight with different uh, levels. And uh, the idea, let me show you this slide about selection. Uh, the idea is that this selection uh, can be done uh, with a graphical user interface, or you can use the scripting language uh, to, for example, select things like uh, water within 10 Armstrongs of the protein that are, also has a C coordinate uh, post larger than zero. You can select also, like for example, all the nucleic or proteins or ions, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is a very powerful selection language uh, that can produce, this is an example of the um, aquaporin channel. Uh, where you have, like, for example, water molecules in one type of uh, draw style, then you have a surface for the protein uh, depicting the channel here, and then some, uh, I think, small molecule there, yeah, uh, with a different, diff different style. Okay, so another example of uh, this uh, structure visualization where you have, um, for example, a surface showing the solvent here, a water box, um, because we are not really interested in the details of the solvent, so we are just having it for context. And then uh, some other type of um, 
representation for the actual uh, molecule of interest, okay? And as I said, there is, uh, so as Joe mentioned, there are uh, ingrained some uh, specific, uh, domain-specific uh, representations like that take into account, for example, secondary structure of proteins um, and sugars and other or DNAs, etc. So, and there is also quite a powerful uh, molecular orbital representation for uh, simulations of quantum chemistry. If you're, if you're doing quantum chemistry, I was doing that myself, and I was uh, showing orbitals from uh, results from Gaussian or Orca or other computation, um, computation chemistry software. Another thing that is important uh, in BMD is that we uh, can uh, use computed properties to add colors to uh, different parts of the system. Uh, and that can be, for example, uh, um, as I said, secondary structure type of uh, analysis like hydrogen bonds, salt bridges, different type of forces, uh, and also time averaging properties like electric fields, occupancy maps, and so on and so forth. This is another example of a surface colored by, um, for example, in the left, we have uh, solvent accessibility, which is a property we're, we're interested in, in, in biophysics. And then here we have electrostatic potential. So we can color uh, different, different types of uh, representations with this, this type of computed properties. Another example, this is an example of a uh, principal component analysis uh, that you can get uh, this type of porcupine plot, uh, basically the movement of, the, of this, this uh, protein, okay? Another example is the use of uh, different type of uh, materials uh, for example, on the left, we have uh, the typical um, shader, and then we can use different type of uh, materials to, to make it so that it's more like cartoonish or more photorealistic, or this is uh, something that I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that was already introduced, the idea of uh, advanced rendering techniques like ray tracing. Okay, so one of the main advantages of the software is for, for molecular dynamics is that it also deals with uh, trajectories. Okay, this is very important. So in this example, we have um, a protein that is unfolding basically in a, from a non-equilibrium simulation. And we, we have here on the left, the, basically the interface that can control the, the time step of the trajectory. And you can see different coloring uh, schemes for different parts of the system and how it evolves. Second. Because not all the softwares that do visualization for molecular dynamic for this type of biophysics uh, can handle trajectories. Uh, and this is one of the main purposes of the software. And uh, as a result, is, uh, we developed, we devoted a lot of time to uh, streamline this, so it's quite fast. Another type of, uh, uh, I analysis of trajectories is the idea of, uh, that you can uh, color certain regions of the space based on the time average properties. Like for example, in this case, we have um, different binding sites of ions in this, in this uh, tRNA. So the idea is that uh, after the traject once you simulated the trajectory, you can time average uh, volumetric properties and get this uh, kind of like contour plots or uh, volumetric different colors depending on the probability of, of uh, binding sites. All right, so um, the idea is that uh, some of the same concepts that were discussed earlier um, in the last, uh, in the previous talk is that uh, with the advent of technolo technology, especially uh, more and more powerful computers that can simulate larger and larger systems, we have gone from uh, pretty small systems, proteins, to almost uh, a few years back, uh, a full chromatophore. And now we are targeting even larger uh, systems uh, as a possibility to simulate. This is, for example, we have done some simulations of the uh, protocell with uh, 10, 10 to billion atoms uh, in Summit, in, uh, in a supercomputer in Oak Ridge National Lab. And the problem is that uh, when we have these large and larger systems and more powerful machines that can simulate for long in time, time scales, 
uh, we have this problem with uh, how do you visualize the results or how do you analyze the results, right? Because, uh, um, for example, if you think about it, the, the typical uh, workflow of someone that has done, that's done, done this type of simulations is that uh, they wait for the simulation to fi finish and then they copy terabytes and terabytes of uh, trajectory data into their own machine, the local machine, and then uh, that takes a lot of time and maybe even it's impossible to do because you don't have enough space. And we've seen that uh, uh, we can generate uh, many uh, terabytes of, of data uh, per day. So let me show you an example. Uh, when we simulated uh, that uh, protocell using uh, up to um, 1,000 nodes of uh, Summit, which is almost 20% uh, of, the, of, the, of the machine. We have good scale in our sister software, Nandi, for molecular dynamics. Uh, but of course, that's, uh, what, what can we do with that data? How can we do that, uh, analyze that data without having to move that data away? So the idea is that we are improving on the speed of uh, I.O. for both the simulation software and for the visualization software, but we want to have something like uh, our colleagues were discussing, like this in situ or uh, in, um, some interface with the supercomputer that is done, doing the simulation so we can get the data, uh, the representative data from, from them, okay? So one of the challenges in this protocell, uh, as I said, is that we were uh, generating several nanos, uh, terabytes of data, and um, and even though and the nice thing is that our software, the simulation software scaling is quite nice; it's almost linear with with a large supercomputer. But uh, if you think about the uh, the, the data analysis, uh, we are still have uh, ways to go in order to get better. Because even though this example of a protocell is not, maybe it's not the prototypical uh, simulation that you've done, uh, you've seen uh, in the literature in the last uh, years, we think that with uh, advances in technology, this is something that is gonna be uh, more regular. And this is, a, this is kind of like an example of what is possible. So let me give you uh, uh, a mini tutorial on how to run BMD uh, using uh, MPI for, for running in the cluster, for doing analysis in parallel or, or, or even rendering. So the idea is that uh, we, in order to run BMD in supercomputers, we don't, di we don't distribute these uh, binaries uh, in our website. In our, in our website, the binaries that you can get are usually for people that are running in the laptop or in the desktop machines. But we work with all the supercomputer, uh, supercomputer centers to build BMD uh, with this uh, MPI interface. So the idea is that we develop some uh, scripting uh, commands uh, that can run um, MPI. And the, the idea is that you should run uh, one uh, MPI rank for a compute node. And basically, BMD has uh, the capability to uh, identify all the resources for that node and use all the CPUs and all the GPUs available for any computation that you want. Okay, and uh, and that and BMD handles all the work scheduling, all the load balancing inside this, these nodes, and that is much uh, easier than uh, becoming an expert in MPI. So you just you can just use some of the subcommands that start with parallel to run, for example, parallel for loops, and then that can auto distribute everything, even if your, if your uh, workflow is quite regular. Um, so that's good. So this is an example of uh, uh, routine analysis in parallel. Uh, this is a cross-correlation analysis where you, uh, for example, compare um, all, the, all, this, all the frames in a trajectory with the, um, with the volumetric density from CryoEM, for example, and you get a number for each comparison. And this I've done in a Cray XK7 machine in uh, one of the supercomputing center in Blue Waters in the University of Illinois, something, uh, a cluster that has recently been decommissioned. And the idea here is that we are doing 10,000 frames and uh, if we use like a serial um, analysis using a single node in GPU, with a GPU, this would take 14 days 
But if you use uh, 128 nodes or even uh, 2000, more than 2,000 nodes, this uh, end up taking uh, less than a couple of hours of uh, less than an hour, okay? And, and this is uh, how powerful, and this would have taken five years using a CPU algorithm. Another example, this is uh, now a rendering in the, in the Amazon EC2 cloud. So you can also do a uh, render of uh, images and movies uh, in batch and uh, once you, you have all the scripting uh, in place. And the idea here is that uh, the rendering part of, uh, of, the, pro of the workflow is, is not that uh, large. Uh, the, the fraction of the time that the computer takes is not that large. What is large here is all the, um, all the math that is around, for example, for selections, coloring different type of, uh, from different properties, computing properties, and so on and so forth. You can, uh, that can take a lot of time and that can also be parallelized. So this uh, up to um, uh, using, for example, up to 32 MPI ranks. And this is uh, quite a large uh, parallelization. Okay, and uh, let me talk about a little, uh, a little bit about uh, high fidelity ray tracing. Uh, because this is one of the main features of uh, the visualization of, in BMD, uh, something that uh, we was discussed also already. The idea of uh, using ray tracing, this is an uh, advanced computer graphics technique that allows uh, a, a simple use of shaders and light, shading and lighting uh, effects. And it's also really good for drawing uh, spheres or any, anything that is not uh, like planar. Uh, so you can imagine that for, uh, for molecules, uh, we are interested in something that can uh, quickly draw spheres. And instead of drawing a sphere as a thousand triangles, we want to do this as a sphere. And that is uh, very powerful and uh, it saves a lot of memory. So it's very fast. Uh, and the idea is that it also works really well when you are rendering uh, scenes or movies for, uh, like for example, uh, planetarium domes and also for omnidirectional movies like uh, those that are in uh, VR or in three, YouTube 360, 360, for example. And uh, the idea is that uh, BMD has different ray tracing engines. These have been done uh, by uh, the main developer of BMD, John Stone, that couldn't be here, unfortunately. He's uh, recently joined NVIDIA, so he's gonna <laughs> continue working with us, but um, so for example, Tachyon is the, the cross-platform ray tracing engine and we have both for NVIDIA, machine, NVIDIA GPUs and for Intel uh, CPUs uh, using optics for, uh, for the NVIDIA machines and uh, Osprey, as, as was already mentioned. So let me show you an example of what can, can ray tracing do for you. So the idea is that here we have um, uh, STMB capsid, so it's like a sp spherical uh, virus, and it's cut in half, so you're seeing like uh, the inside of the of the capsid, and uh, all these structures have uh, a lot of uh, rugosity in the surface, poro, uh, like pores, uh, cavities, and the idea is that on the left we have like a regular uh, uh, re render with two lights and no shadows, and it's very difficult to identify all the, all these cavities. Whereas if you use uh, one of the ray tracing uh, technique um, advances ambient occlusion, you can uh, pretty instantly, without be becoming an expert on lighting or anything, you can just switch this on and you already see uh, shad the shadows that cast uh, some of these cavities. So the idea of ambient occlusion is uh, if you imagine you are outside in a cloudy day where the light comes from everywhere, so that is what is coming here. So it casts the shadows uh, on all these uh, uh, bits and, and pieces. Another example of, uh, well, something that I already mentioned is that uh, ray tracing is very good, it's very well matched for molecular visualization because of all these curved geometries that we have. We can draw spheres, uh, cylinders, and, uh, and so on and so forth pretty fast. And um, this is another example of uh, the HIV capsid. And you can uh, immediately identify some of the features of the structure, like for example here, like a, a pore in this examer, and uh, you don't have to um, waste time trying to understand the, the structure itself. Another example of this is uh, uh, this is the STMB virus that I was showing earlier with the, with the, um, some of the performance, 
and uh, you can see here pretty easily all these uh, cavities and all these surface uh, irregular surfaces and porous uh, parts in the in the structure. Another thing that uh, ray tracing allows you to work with is uh, depth of field, which is a photographic uh, technique where you can see in the, here in the bottom left, uh, you can see the full system for context, but uh, like uh, blurry out some parts of the system, so you focus the attention of the of the viewer into one part, specific part of, the, of that you're interested in. Okay. So uh, we we work in collaboration with Nvidia uh, to optimize these uh, ray tracing engines for the new uh, te uh, new technology uh, for uh, these GPUs uh, called RTX. This speeds speeds up the ray tracing. So um, this is an example of a uh, system, a chromatophore, which has uh, several hundred million atoms, and which could be very difficult to render for traditional um, uh, rasterization, where because we have so many spheres, so many so many uh, curved surfaces, and with the ray tracing you can do this pretty fast. And as I said earlier, this is really good for uh, uh, dome panoramic. Uh, renders for uh, omnidirectional VR, and so on and so forth. And these uh, RTX uh, new generation uh, graphic cards from NVIDIA give, you, uh, give us the opportunity to get a very uh, big boost in performance, up to eight times uh, the rendering compared to the last generation, or in this case, like a couple of years back, this Quadro uh, Volta, machine, Volta GPUs uh, so now we can, as I said, render these huge scenes uh, pretty, uh, pretty fast. These are a few examples of uh, covers from uh, journals that were done with BMD. Um, you can see some of the, some of the different um, flavors of uh, final products that you can get. So let me show you another example. Uh, of uh, visualization and analysis that been done recently. Uh, this, is a, this is a work uh, from, in collaboration with the group of Romy Amaro in San Diego that they uh, study the, the spike protein, the spike dynamics of, um, of coronavirus, COVID SARS-CoV-2, to try to understand how this protein interacts with uh, uh, the human body. And um, so the idea is that this, uh, this is a drawing of a very large system, more than 100 million atoms, and uh, this was done with BMD. Inside this, this uh, article, there is also uh, an interesting analysis, uh, and this is a visualization that accompanies the analysis. This is kind of like a, a deep learning based uh, clustering um, from different, uh, uh, a lot of data from trajectories. So basically all these trajectories for the spike protein were clustered to try to understand uh, uh, the different uh, structures that the spike protein visits. And this is the um, stochastic neighbor in embedding uh, plot. So basically each point in this, in this uh, hypersphere uh, represents one structure. And this is a way of visualizing high dimensional data. So in this case, uh, the clustering is done using RMST, which is a, a, a typical uh, root mean square deviation, typical analysis in, in molecular dynamics. And this, this study and these images were picked up by the New York Times and, and one of the articles uh, back in uh, 2020 and because of this uh, nice uh, final product. But the idea is that you can also get uh, not only nice figures that could go to your paper or to, in this case, journal article. Uh, uh, yeah. The, journals, but also you can get much uh, better information from very good uh, graphics in, in, in the structures. Another example, I was talking about how you can get uh, rendering for planetary domes. So we, uh, uh, people from our lab participated with um, people from uh, NCSA back in Illinois to get this uh, uh, movie called Beard of Planet Earth that you can, you probably Maybe you've seen in this in Amazon video, or you can also see this uh, now in YouTube. It's available. 
And the idea is that uh, this is a render from this um, chromatophore, and it tells you a story, a short story, it's a three-minute video, about uh, how this has, has evolved and how, how the chromatophore uh, gather lights and through photosynthesis basically generates chemical energy. And uh, so one of the things that uh, I can tell you about this is that uh, using the new RTX GPUs, uh, we can get these renders that were done before in, in a Maxwell uh, generation GPUs up to 15 times faster now. And uh, as I said earlier, so you can also do uh, renders for uh, omnidirectional and stereoscopic uh, videos, or you can, for example, uh, have you seen those uh, YouTube 360 videos where you can see a video and then you can like browse uh, around and you can see basically the whole around you. So those videos, uh, you can create them uh, with VMD. So basically you can render in this, in this mode then uh, convert them to the proper format for uh, YouTube, and you can upload them on YouTube, and you can have use. And you can also see them in head-mounted displays, like the Oculus Go. So, for example, if you were uh, doing a poster session and you have a movie that people wants to, you want people to see, you can bro uh, bring your head-mounted display, your Oculus Go, and you can give them the, the Oculus Go, and they can see uh, around uh, the movie. So BMD is also part of the, uh, one of the standards in rendering, Anari. So the idea is that uh, you can interface BMD with different uh, renders that have been developed by uh, hardware companies like Osprey and Optics. And you can see, for example, different, uh, different ways of, it. this is kind of like comparing the different renders, uh, the different ray tracers from Tachyon, which is uh, basically developed by, by Johnstone in, in our lab, with these other two that are interface. And another way of interfacing with uh, when another vendor is uh, this um, uh, Omniverse uh, rend um, platform that created by NVIDIA, and you can get like these very interesting materials. This is kind of like an IC uh, material that could even uh, reflect better the, the properties of your, of your uh, biosystem, right? Uh, and this is, uh, this is very powerful. So in this case, B, uh, BMD exports uh, the scene and uh, with all these, uh, basically all these uh, triangles and everything, and then you can render this with Omniverse. Okay, and to f uh, finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the um, Analysis that you can do in BMD uh, that have been uh, accelerated using GPU. So for example, this is uh, an example of uh, if you get uh, a density map from experiment, uh, those can uh, be, uh, have some uh, like errors around these, these regions and it's difficult to, to identify which part is which. So there are some algorithms for, to segmentate these, uh, these different parts. So once you do that, you label each part, and then you can do any type of analysis, uh, like when you do that with the structural information in atomic structures. And the idea is that there is, a, this is an example of uh, uh, this, this method called MDFF, molecular dynamic flexible feeding, where you can fit a structure that you have, for example, from a PDB to a density map, and, um, and this is a way to try to evaluate how, how good is the, that fit, okay? And this is something that we spend some time uh, making super fast. So this is a um, uh, performance table for this uh, cross-correlation analysis. So you can, you can compare, uh, for example, BMD with the latest, uh, one of the latest, or not the latest, but uh, advanced GPUs. And we can say that uh, we are like almost 10 times better than ourselves in a few generations back and like 300 times compared to other type of uh, visualization software like this Chimera. Um, so yeah, and another example of uh, is clustering analysis for molecular dynamics uh, trajectories. So the idea here is that uh, you have a trajectory of uh, different, different uh, poses of your protein, for example, different structures and you wanna 
kind of like understand uh, how to cluster them, how to classify them. So you can, for example, compare uh, each frame where with each frame. So that, that's what creates these kind of like uh, upper triangular uh, matrices, plots. And uh, this is, this can be done in MATLAB or in R, but usually it's just pretty slow. And because we then uh, develop some algorithms that are GPU accelerated and can do this uh, pretty fast. And the, the idea is that once you have these clusters, you can understand, like for example, the, the thermodynamics, uh, like all these different uh, minima in the, in, the, in the trajectory. Okay, I think I have time for questions. I want to acknowledge uh, our lab and all the vendors that we work with in all these years and also the funding and, and thank you for your attention. So I have time for questions. This is Klaus Schulten, one of the pioneers of biophysics and the, the original um, PI of the lab where we are now. Uh, we are. Okay, so questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, is there a uh, interface to NWCAD for visualization? Can you repeat your question? If you have an interface it's for visualizing NWCAD? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yes. How, how about web interfaces? Web interfaces, um, so we have done a uh, long time ago some dabbling about web interfaces, but we kind of like give up on that because of all the standards change sometimes. And we kind of like focus on uh, this standalone program that you can, you can use. So I would say we are not working on that right now, on web interfaces. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I understand that for BMD, you can run your analysis using PPL scripting. Is there a way to parallelize the PPL program that you write so that they can scale? Yes. I show you, uh, there is, you have the slides in the Slack channel. There is a slide about MPI parallelization. So if you are doing your, uh, your analysis, you can kind of like parallelize that using some of the uh, subcommands there. Okay. And, uh, I have another question. Yes. So you showed that in VMD we can get the principal component square trajectory. Is there a way to get so if I understand correctly, these are the normal modes of the trajectory. Right. Uh, is there a way to get the frequency of those normal modes? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we sometimes all the, some of the analysis that you see here are developed. Uh, at the sea level, that's why they are like super fast, uh, GPU accelerated. Some of the analysis are maybe at the scripting level, maybe Python. You can interface uh, BMD with uh, some other analysis tools, like for example MD analysis or other type of analysis. Those are those in principle will not be parallelized because we are just. Uh, but in principle, you could you could do that. Yeah, you could do. The principal component analysis yourself, just scripting the algorithm. I would. I don't know if I recommend that, but uh, yeah, you can parallelize that for sure, and you can get the frequencies. Yeah. Okay.